Hi, I'm Cressel Anderson. This is Maker Size. In this episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've been up to, which is building a brewery. Now, I've selected mini splits as my technique for heating and cooling this space, and I'm going to go into the details of why I went that route. Uh, as well as some of the details associated with the installation. This is a commercial space, and so uh, it's, it's a little bit different than what I've been doing uh, with Maker Size. So uh, I hope you enjoy this. Let's get started. The space that I have for the brewery is about 1,000 square feet in a building built in 1955. It has a fairly new TPO membrane roof on it, so I wanted to protect that membrane from any punctures or abrasion. The roof is easy enough to access from the back of the building. I cut strips of TPO flashing to go between the roof and the treated 4x4s I cut to mount the outdoor units on. the outdoor units are heavy enough they needed to be placed on the roof using some large equipment. I was fortunate that the warehouse a couple blocks away where I stored the equipment agreed to lift the pallet up to roof level for me with a forklift. Moving the outdoor units from the pallet to roof level wasn't difficult with a forklift involved. I solicited a few quotes for mini splits for this space. Although I requested quotes for two one and a half ton units so I could compare apples to apples, all the quotes I received were for a mini split with a single outdoor three ton and one or two indoor units. The quotes were between 7,500 and 8,500. The quotes included equipment rated between 16 and 19 sear. The total cost for the two Sinville Aura 18HF units is $2,800. Hanging the indoor units was basically the same as in the previous mini split I installed. I used the included template to locate the mounting bracket for the indoor unit. The exterior walls of the building are 12 inches thick, solid brick masonry. I bought a 3 inch diamond hole saw and rented a water fed core drill to cut through to the outside. I decided to go with the Sinvel Aura 18HF because it has a 20 sear rating and because of my previous positive experience with Sinvel mini splits. I saved a lot of money and ended up with a higher performing system. I did a video a couple years back where I installed a mini split in my garage at home. Take a look at the link in the description. It is still going strong and I really enjoy having a climate controlled space to work in. Another major reason why I decided to go with the Senville mini splits was a cost savings of 66% on the equipment. Although Senville is sponsoring this video, I made the decision to go with the 18HF before approaching them as a sponsor. Dealing with the challenging exterior wall penetration for routing the electrical and refrigerant lines to the indoor units could have been a factor in the cost of the quotes I received. Another factor likely was the 38 inch wide alley between my space and the neighboring building. It's a very unpleasant space for working. Maybe this is a good time to discuss exactly why I ended up working in the alley anyway. I initially had planned to hire this work out, even if I was hiring someone to install equipment I procured myself. As everyone dealing with projects during the last two years has experienced, plans don't always go according to plan. Initially I delayed some of this work waiting for stability in building material pricing and supply chain problems. During that time, I had the opportunity to consider exactly what work I hire out and why.
My plan to hire out the installation of the mini splits was largely driven by my perception that commercial work has to be performed by a licensed HVAC contractor. I looked into North Carolina contractor law and found that in my case, a license isn't required. In fact, it seems the legislators specifically carved out a niche for many splits. Article 2 of the North Carolina contractor laws is the relevant place to look. General Statute Section 8721, Heating Group Number 3, which is the closest category to my application, is limited to systems that raise or lower the temperature for comfort indirectly through a heat exchanger using an air distribution system of ducts and having a mechanical refrigeration capacity of 15 tons or less. No ducts means it isn't heating group number three. Further, using mini splits and a separate ducted system for ventilation is still possible because such a system uses duct work not associated with conveying heated air. I reviewed with my local inspector to ensure we both had the same understanding before proceeding down this path. Although a closer reading of the law led me to conclude I could install the mini split equipment, there isn't an exception for hooking up electricity in my case. Conveniently, HVAC contractors may obtain a special restricted license classification for electrical work they perform. Regardless, I'd need some sort of licensed electrical contractor to perform the electrical portion of the install. During the additional project delays, I further scrutinized the contractor laws. I realized my experience as an electrical engineer afforded me the opportunity to sit for the electrical contractor's exam. I made my application, paid the requisite fees, studied for, and passed the exam. Months after starting the process, I'm now able to perform electrical work under my own bona fide North Carolina Electrical Contractor Limited Classification License. I can perform any single project less than 600 volts and less than $60,000. However, I'm not for hire. I jumped through the hoops and obtained a license exclusively to do work on my own business. I feel pretty comfortable working with refrigeration systems given my previous experience installing mini splits. I had most of the equipment from my previous project, but I did acquire some additional tools for this work, such as a large diameter vacuum hose and valve core removal tool. The electrical installation is also something I'm confident doing, but I don't want to go into the details of the electrical aspect of this project since most folks won't fall into the category of doing this work themselves. So it's been about 10 or 15 minutes and that thing has not come up uh, much. It was still well under 500, so that's good enough for me. That makes me feel good about the flare connections. I can put the trader valve back into the actual mini split outdoor unit. Then I'll release the refrigerant into the system and go inside and uh, turn it on. The big extra thick Appion vacuum hose plus the vacuum rated core removal tools. These are, these are the best. Forgetting that. Super low vacuum down to 150 microns. Very good. What I do want to encourage folks to do very much in the maker size spirit is challenge your assumptions, ask questions collaboratively, and stretch yourself. Read and understand the laws associated with your project and cultivate communication channels with your local authority having jurisdiction. I find projects like this so rewarding. I think to myself about the things that could have gone wrong, tools that would have made the work faster, or opportunities to improve in the future. 
Those thoughts are an essential and exciting aspect of pursuing projects that stretch me. That is exactly what the brewery is for me. It's a project that stretches me. Many aspects are well within my skill set, many are not. These types of projects require me to grow. I love living in that sweet spot professionally. The last couple details to wrap up the project was to make a cover for the line set out of gutter downspout and install the Wi-Fi modules into the indoor units. It's super handy to be able to adjust the temperature at the brewery from home. When I arrive on cold mornings to work, the inside is nice and comfortable. I hope you found this video educational and informative. And if you're interested in more information on these mini splits or the brewery, take a look down in the description. I'll have some links. Thanks.